Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna do a little disassembly and maintenance on this very interesting little knife right here. This is the Boost Blades Smoke. Um, interesting, interesting. Let's uh get into it, but first I wanna highlight that right now, pardon me, this knife is in very good condition. Nice action, good centering, no real problems with it, so let's just make sure we return it back to the state it came in. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take it apart here. First off. Pop out these back screws here, and these are unfortunately T6 Torx bits. But one thing to highlight is, see here, it's got this little cutout on the clip. So you can get into these bits, which is nice. Can't argue with that. Come on. See some evidence of a thread locker on there, but it's nothing too permanent, so can't argue with it there. Okay, so there we go, and I'm arranging these roughly in the position they came off the knife. And this uh, pivot guy up here appears to be T8, so I'll go ahead and swap that over. And now we got T8. Beautiful. And with that, this knife should actually just come apart. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, 094. Nice. See, there's a little bit of numbering on here. I kind of wish, honestly, that in numbered editions, they would uh, print the numbers in places that are more readily visible. Like, I love to see it on the inside of backspaces and whatnot. Um, but that's completely a little nitpick. That's just one of those things that brings collectors some little bit of joy. Like, oh, I've got 94. You've got... Eh, whatever. Um, but what we can see here is that this is, practically speaking, pretty straightforward. Got yourself a relatively boring frame lock here. You got a ceramic detent ball, uh, over travel stop right here, which is good. You've got a stainless steel washer for the bearings to go up against. And we can see here that these are ceramic bearings, which um, is something I've commented on before is never a bad thing. Well, at least in the folding knife world. And, uh, you know, has potentially some small benefits. And, you know, it's nice to see. So uh, certainly points for that. And the uh, blade itself is made nicely and without a whole lot of, uh, well, <laughs> without a whole lot of anything particularly distinctive. Um, I mean, in terms of construction, design's plenty fine. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, use a Q-tip here and just pop through the pivot. I am using 91% isopropyl alcohol right here. And if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, my screwdriver, pad, and whatever, um, I have a video uh, about Nick's knife disassembly toolkit that will tell you exactly what it is that I'm using uh, and includes links and everything. So check that out. Um, you'll get a much better response there than asking that in the comments. Try to remember to put this on every one of them. Uh, one other thing I'll highlight here is take a look at this pivot. This is a custom done. I've not seen this on any other knife. And um, you can see here that it just slides right into the into the, 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 the handle itself. And what this means is that this pivot cannot spin freely. And so it's sort of another take on the captive pivot thing, but it has a functional purpose as well as looking kind of pretty. So I can't argue with that at all. And with that, actually, the knife is... Uh, here, I'll clean off the lock bar interface. Uh, the knife is clean and clear and under control here. We're ready to go. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Use a little bit of uh, nano oil there and uh, using 10 weight nano oil for this. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other lubrications that can work okay for you. No problem. There we go. Pop that loose. Now, here's this. And that's loose. Not loose. It's distributed. Touch more just onto the pivot itself there. Alrighty. And I'm rebuilding this guy upside down. Oh, that's right, because I have to. Because the uh, pivot is fixed on the other side here. Ah, uh, is there anything else? Am I missing any bearings? No, that's just the space that came out. That's fine. No stop pin. Alrighty. Lock this guy down. I'll start off by going ahead and using the, uh, putting in the pivot because I happen to have that bit in the driver already. And this is a uh, new innovation, so to speak, although I gather it's been around for many years. Just clean off any thread locker residue on here. This is a Loctite stick of the blue uh, medium strength Loctite. And so I'm giving it a try.
Reviewers sent it along. Well, didn't send it, but recommended it. I can buy my own Loctite, but I appreciate the recommendations always. There we go. Put this... Again, just spin that real quick, clean the screw, remove any old thread locker. A little bit of that on there. Now we slide this in. You can see there is, well, I should have pointed this out while the knife was taken apart, but there is a hidden screw underneath there that is holding the backspace, or uh, I'm sorry, that's holding the uh, uh, pocket clip in place, which is always, you know, is it something that practically matters? No, not remotely, but it is kind of a neat little panache touch, if you will. Just a little bit of swag there. Being of short, of course that is short for swagger. Or the cheap stuff you get handed out at conferences. That's swag too. Okay, gotta be careful here because this is acting like it's wanting to cross thread. There we go. So I just backed it off a little bit. You gotta have a sense for the torque. The solution, if a screw is resisting you, is never just crank on it until it stops resisting. No, 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 no. Uh, this, you need to use a, the fine touch here. A little bit of hand. Uh, or a little bit of panache, that is. Swag, perhaps, if you will. And uh, interestingly, oh yeah, that's nice. Um, interestingly enough, it looks like just fully cranking down the pivot results in the smoothest action here, which means good tolerances and is nice, and then the action is just very nice here. Um, so there you go. That's, oh, I forgot to loop the detent path. Um, completely. So if you forget to do that, or if your knife is just running a little squeaky or something like that, and something you can do is use your little needle tip applicator or just put some oil onto a little um, oiler sort of tool and then just apply it right under the detent ball and that'll have the same basic effect and smooth things up. But anyways, there you go. Seven minutes in and we are all set disassembling the Bose Blades Smoke. Uh, so, hope this has been interesting to you that I, uh, oh, and let's just double check. Yeah, centering's still great, action's still great. Yeah, we're all good. Nice and easy, smooth sailing. I hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.